Hi, welcome back to Geekified. You have got an episode on one of the top shows that has come out of America. It's on HBO Max. You'll find it on Sky. It is Succession. Succession is literally just finished um, almost two weeks ago. I haven't had time to get in about it because unfortunately it took me ages to watch the last couple of episodes. Um, but uh, I've just finished it within the last three hours, watched the last episode and watched the last two episodes actually one by one. So Nathan, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm really good, mate. Looking forward yeah. to this one. Oh God, before I even get in, so I, I watched two the last two episodes in a row. I'd watched quite a lot. I didn't have a time to to catch up and watch the rest. And then obviously I got the last two episodes. And you'll know the last two episodes was the, uh, Tuscany. Tuscany was there? Is that where they were? Yeah, the wedding. Tuscany. Yeah. 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 The wedding in Tuscany. And then the finale. And obviously I still get, I'm, not, I'm going to get to this scene because it's, it's, it's possibly the best scene of the entire series for me. Uh, and we'll talk about it later. We won't talk about it now. I just want to tell you what oh, I think it was for me was that when with Logan and Kendall talking. Uh, at, at yeah, and the, the, the dinner, the dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so I was going to say, I thought you'd say the one at the end and all in the room together. I thought you were going to say that one, but no, no, no just the two, just the two, the two at one across each other. Holy shit! Anyway, yeah, yeah. but we'll get back to we'll get back to this. We're going to have to have a quick rundown of Succession. So Succession <laughs> is it's now on its uh, third season. That's the third season just finished. It's been it's, it's definitely got a fourth season. We, we absolutely know that. And I don't think it's going to slow down because it's now getting Emmys flung, flung left, right, and centre at it. It seems to be the award winner of Sky. We're banking it on and being, and hopefully it stays that way because it's led by Brian Cox. Now, if you don't know Brian Cox, you'll know him from this. This is uh, X Men School of Xavier <laughs> logo right here. Uh, you'll know him uh, as Striker. Striker, if you are from my generation, uh, was the the guy hell bent on destroying the X Men. If you're not a geek fan, you he's can pick bright, up... He's William, William Wallace's dad and Braveheart. <laughs> now, you know, if you're a Scot Scottish fan, any of our fans <laughs> in America that watch all this because we're Scottish, then yes. But um, he's done loads. The guy's done absolutely loads, and he he leads this. Now, this TV show is loosely... What we, what I do know and I have read it is loosely based, based on the Murdoch family. So I think the inspiration comes from the Murdoch empire and everything there is. Not that we know anything about the robotic Murdochs at all, because we don't really truly know anything about them. But this show is kind of based around the idea of what if we had this family? What if they all freaking hated each other? What if the, this happened? And what if that happened? And this is where succession comes from. So Logan Roy, played by Brian Cox, is... The patriarch of the family, he runs this company uh, and basically from, I think it's straight away in the first episode when he gets unwell, is that, it's the first episode, yeah. isn't it? So he gets no, unwell. No, it's, it's first, the first episode, is, it's his birthday party and he's going to, supposed to be announcing his uh, Kendall as, as a successor and then he doesn't. Yeah, no. so for, yeah. For literally from the first episode, it's it's announcing everything of what's going to happen when this guy, because he's quite old in it. I mean, Brian Cox is, I think he's 79 or... I think it's. I think he's supposed to be. They did say I think he's supposed to be seventy six in this or something like that. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so he's obviously on the way out. He's got. He's going to hand over the reins for the company, but then he basically has a stroke, uh, and everything becomes a big panic. And in that panic and in that moment, not that it's not happened previously, we get to see the children scrambling around, and just like a pack of rats, they're ready to pick up and pounce on different bits. And from that moment on is where we get that the three seasons. So I think that's the best way to summarize everything uh, so far. But I've got to say, like, with an absolute shadow of a doubt, the guy who is running this, obviously Brian Cox is the main man, and that's Jeremy Strong. If you don't know who Jeremy Strong is, Jeremy Strong is clearly one of the best freaking actors that I'd never heard of until I'd seen this. I'd seen him in Bits and Bobs, but wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, is, I've seen him in something else before. This is the first sort of main thing I've seen him in. And also, um, more recently, he was in that film, The Gentleman, the Guy Ritchie film last year. He was yeah. in that as well. Yeah. Um, I read a quite interesting article about, because I, I, I got quite obsessed with this show, and I have been since I first watched it, and I read a lot about it. And apparently he's a, he's a method actor, Jeremy Strong. Yes, so I've, I've only and just read he, this yesterday. He doesn't... He doesn't um, he was, he was interviewed afterwards and didn't realise that it was part comedy. Mm. I mean, 
Yeah. 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 It's quite, it's it's quite, it's the same. I think it's the same article that I've read. Yeah. I think. Um, but I think it was talking a lot about how he gets into character. It was actually yeah. talking a lot about Jeremy Strong's career of how he became. He got yeah. where he is. Uh, basically, just chomping on the ankles of people. I think is is from what they're yeah. putting forward in this article. I'll fling the article up or. I'll put yeah. a link to it and then I'll drop it in the bottom as well for the couple of ones that I read and Nathan will pass something to me and we'll put them all up for anyone to read. But the, 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 the article bit on, on Jeremy Strong was absolutely fantastic. It was basically yeah, talking about the films that he'd been in, the people who he had idolised when he was a kid, what he wanted from him and how he worked his way up to where he is now. Yeah, yeah no, it's very... He, no, he's, he's fantastic in this. Um, it's very... It's very it's a very complex cat because I think the other characters in it are quite sort of one one dimensional, but not in a bad way. They're quite one dimensional, mm. but him there's a there's a there's a big lots of lots of things going on with him. You know, um there's obviously there's the ex-wife thing, there's the, the drug uh, addiction thing, there's mm-hmm. it's this weird sort of um love hate relationship with his father, you know, uh like the, the desperate, absolutely desperate for his approval through the whole thing and never quite gets it and then he thinks he's going to get it and he doesn't get it and then you know just um it's just it's bizarre it's it's bizarre it's it's a it's such a complex it's a, i mean everyone everyone's got a family and everyone's family's different and everyone's family's got it's, it's complex but yeah. i've never seen it portrayed as well on television or film before yeah you know i know that, i know that it's a it's a it's at this sort of it's 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 under this facade of the you know the business empire and stuff like yeah. that, but it's, it's this this all this thing is about is relationships, the whole yeah. thing. And that, no. that for me, yeah. for me honestly, this has been one of the key things of why I've loved this show so much is is I've got I've got siblings and I've got cousins who are like basically like first like brother and sister to me. I've got lots of family who are very very close, and the way that we speak to each other is is, <laughs> is the way that these, these brothers and sisters speak. We are nasty. But in a loving way, you know, what I mean, it's like we'll slag each other, we'll say cheeky things and we'll basically just like slag like just really bad things about, about them yeah, just yeah, because yeah. we're brother and sister. You know, what I mean, it's like, that's it. Yeah, that's just the way they speak. I think the I think the quite interesting thing for me is that um, a lot of people, a lot was getting the, the first sort of four or five episodes of this season that weren't getting that good a press. Mm-hmm. But I actually thought they were fantastic. I thought it was just a much, a much slower pace. It was a lot. It was it was condensed over a shorter space of time, like the the, the series. It was over that sort of two three week period, isn't it? It's all sort of yeah. takes place over, um, but especially the second episode of this season, I think, is possibly the best written hour of television I've ever seen. What you know? Uh, it's just what happened in the second it's episode. The one, it's the one when um, they just found out that uh, Kendall's trying to. He's back in his his ex-wife's apartment and he's trying to sort out the what's yeah. happening he gets them in to talk to the brother and sister and then Logan's somewhere is in Croatia or Serbia or somewhere and he's yeah. something over there and it's just like and it, yeah, it takes he, place it's almost, it's almost in real time over an hour yeah as well uh, Logan disappears doesn't he he disappears yeah. over to well, Serbia for extradition reasons yeah. isn't it yeah, they're, they're panicking they're pa- but I swear to god I'm going to have to bleep this out because obviously it's his, it's his tagline I don't know why I should have to bleep it out because it's literally Logan's tagline, but yeah. every single time he says it gets me because it just comes from the heart of a Glaswegian for me. It's just very fuck yeah. off. Yeah. It's no, so it, reminds me, it reminds me of that sort of thing that um my dad sort of says it in a very similar my dad's from Ayrshire, but he does it in a sort of similar way where they're almost they almost swear in a way that they're trying to get out quickly so they don't get in trouble from their mother their mum, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, it's just, I mean, and I think the, I mean, I was quite surprised when I read about the writer it was um, Jesse Armstrong who did uh, Peep Show and Fresh Meat over here. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can see the comedy aspect of it, and but just to um, go from that into this, which is, although there's comedy in it, it's, it's such a serious thing, and it's, it's. I mean, I suppose Peep Show is very dialogue driven, obviously. Yeah. So maybe that I mean that probably makes a bit more sense, but I think it's that's just, right. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Peep Show is ve- Peep Show is very similar. The way the kind of behaviors that, that people mm-hmm. talk to each other. The guy, the way he's wrote it, is very naturalistic uh, language. Mm-hmm. It's very it bounces off each other. It's almost like you get some films and some TV shows where it doesn't feel normal and it feels like a script. This doesn't feel like a script, even though it's clearly a script. It feels um, as if they're just literally bouncing off each other. 
And I was reading his, I didn't, well, I saw that Will Ferrell's name was on it as an executive producer, but so is um, Adam McKay, he's an executive producer on this as well. Adam the guy that's McKay. in that, you know, the, the Leonardo DiCaprio new one that's coming up, Don't Look Up. And he was, oh, yeah, Don't Look Up, yes. And a few other things, but um, so some big names attached to it, you know, so. Um, well, it's certainly winning. Still, it's just, it's just, I mean, there's not a, it's, it's one of the best cast things we'll ever see as well i think everyone's pretty perfect in the role yeah um I, th- I think that kieran culkin especially um well kieran culkin just, is the one that seems to be getting well the most not the most praise he's get. he seems to be becoming the favorite character of the show it's like everyone you, anyone i know that's watched succession turns around and says like who do you love kieran culkin it's roman well he's almost like the runt isn't he and yeah. I think he's probably been picked, picked because he's quite small in uh, and its stature and stuff as well. Yeah, and he's got me and he sort of makes up for that with this sort of bravado and stuff like that. Uh, and there's this weird sort of you know because um, obviously his mother left when he was really young, so yeah. he, he sort of he can you know he's got that weird thing with Jerry, which is like a sort of motherly type thing as well. And yeah, it's just, it's just, I was yeah. absolutely howling. Obviously, I watched the last two episodes the of season pick. three, but the, the dick pick. pick. Uh, oh my god now spoilers if you've not seen that up until please ever so we'd love you to watch it but it's not even a spoiler to be honest but yeah basically uh, roman sends his father a dick pic by accident thinking it's it's uh, jerry and i swear and that, to, and he actually, that, that conversation they have just roman and and logan he's like, i mean i wouldn't be surprised you, if that was improvised you're are you a pervert <laughs> yes. and it's just to me uh Kieran Culkin just looks so oh um the bit of the oh, table because he's he knows what it's he's like done a... and he sits at the end of yeah. a, a table and the camera is just on his right and he's just like that. His fa- his whole that, face changes. But I think that it sort of leads into the final the, the final part of the last episode mm-hmm. where you see that vulnerability and that sort of you know he's a child who just wants he doesn't want to upset his father and you can see yeah. that because obviously. We'll talk about it more in a, in a little bit about what yeah. happens at the end. But yeah. you know, he realizes that you no, know, I've done this. It's upset my father, and he doesn't, and that's what's fucked him up. You yeah. know what I said? Um, I think. I think just, that, it, 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 that those two things led in quite. Although they were completely different, yeah, sort of led in quite well together and showed that side of his personality really well. Yeah, I think. I think for him, I think it's going to be a big season for him next season, and not not so much. I think uh, uh, we'll go back to the kind of ending, but I think, but I think there's a lot going to lean into Roman for the next season. So we were talking I about love, the cat. I love, I love this little thing as well. We're sorry, when we're talking about Roman, is the fact that um, uh, Logan calls him Romulus. And obviously, because he's Roman, and then obviously it was uh, Romulus and Remus were the two twins that founded Rome and got you know, looked after by the by the wolf. Uh, the wolf. Uh, and I thought that was just such a cool thing. You know, he yeah. calls, calls him Romulus. And yeah. the whole way through, that's all he calls him. He only calls him Romulus. The whole he calls time. him Ro- yeah, Romulus a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think it's quite cool but- yeah, I think yeah, there's was, was, was so many layers to the writing. Obviously, yeah. we talked about Kieran Culkin, who, like I said, is, seems to be becoming the favourite, and, and and right, rightly so because he's he's absolutely hilarious and he's got great story development as well. Um, touched on Jeremy Strong. What about Sarah Snook, Shiv? I I see. I hate I hate the character. But I think you're supposed to. Yeah, she's not. Well, she's, got, she's got very little redeeming qualities to her. Yeah, you know, she'll step over anybody. She she. She, it's like she, she uses everyone, like everyone in the whole thing. She uses them or tries <laughs> to use them. I'll tell you a quick anecdote. Sorry, I don't, yeah. I'm going to tell I you a quick on. anecdote about about this. Yeah. Like I've recommended this show to two different people now, right? I have to tell a lot, but two two really like family members that have tried to get to watch it, and the, one of the family members, Maganda, turned around. And he was like, "Oh, I can't watch it. I hate them all." <laughs> <laughs> that's to that's what he said. He was like, "I can't watch it. I hate every single person yeah. in it. They're all horrible." Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to go but, back. Uh, sorry to go back to but, uh, to Shiv. But Snook. But I think she's she's amazing in it. And I love the, the way that she's just she's she's obviously, especially in this season where she's obviously come out of the political thing and going into the business thing, which she's mm. never worked in before. And she's so far out of her depth, and she gets caught out over and over again, and she still thinks that she's better than them all. Yeah. I love that she's just so full of herself and thinks she's better than them all. And and, and by the end of it, you realise that her husband Tom is better than her. At it, you know. So Tom, I want to understand, you know. Oh I'm Matthew God. McFadden. I love Matthew McFadden. Anyway, he's a great actor. Oh, he's a, he's a tremendous actor, but he's he's literally a wet wipe in this, but in a great way. But he's so not, well acted, but he's, but he's not. He's, 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 he's a he's not. He's a player. He's met man. He's a, out of everybody 
every single person in this show is desperately clinging to fucking uh, driftwood, trying to get holding them. on, trying to get their head above water. And the one person that's, that's literally came out with a life raft is him, is Tom. And Greg. Tom. And Greg. Oh, well, and Greg. But Greg's not even meant it, though. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, he's going to just... end up in charge. I'm telling you, he's going to end up in charge at the end. Oh. Greg. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sarah uh, Snook, I think the Shiv is is fantastic. I think the performance that she's given of her is just this amazing. She's she's got more presence than so many other actors I've seen before. Like she's so fucking powerful in the role. But then she, it's when the chink in her armor comes comes out, you can yeah. oh, she just becomes someone different. You get to see the real. You can. T- I think a lot of the times when you're watching it, the reason that a lot of these deals and stuff fall through. It's because no one likes her. Not, none of the other people. Like the bit, you know, when they're in the it's in the second season, mm. when they're trying to arrange that deal with the other, the Pierce family. Yeah. And uh, they've got the mother and stuff like that. And then obviously, uh, Kendall's eventual girlfriend's there as one of the one of the one of the daughters, and she just like has that big thing at the, the table and basically blows up the deal because no one likes her. Yeah. You know. But she, but she's got this bravado and thinks that she can just do whatever she wants all the she time. She still thinks she still thinks she's the best person. She still thinks she's the best person in the room. But again, it's because this family have brought everyone up to believe that. It's like they've brought literally brought every child up to think that they're the best. But I think, but I think as well though, you, you get it's hinted at through the whole thing that because she was the only girl, she was almost like Logan's favorite when yeah. they were children. You know, because he calls her Pinky, doesn't he? Pinky, yeah. And none, none of the rest of them have like a cute, a cute nickname. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, I think it's really. It's just. I mean, it's, it's you can you could you could you could talk about each character for an hour and a half. Oh, you could. So I'm trying to. I'm desperately trying to think. Right. Well, I don't want to mention that because well, that's about 15 minutes worth of us talking. Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying not. I'm trying not to even bring up some of the other work that people have done. Like, uh, like uh, Sarah Snook was first time I ever seen her was Transcendence, Ethan Hawke movie. Um, I've yeah, always I questioned where she... she was in that um, Pieces of a Woman last yeah. year. Yeah. There's little bits she's popped up and she's she's amazing. She's absolutely amazing. And uh, she's Australian, it, Australian or New Zealand? She's Australian. Yeah, Australian. Yeah, because it was Transcendence was a I think it was Australian film, and it was released there first, and it came out. Um, but um, if you haven't seen that, you like time travel movies, watch that. One of the best time travel movies. It's a paradox. It's one of the only time travel movies I've ever seen that answers a paradox like completely, which is amazing. Honestly, watch it. Put a link in the bio. But yeah, on to next, Greg. Let's talk about Greg. I love Greg. Oh. He sort of stumbles along, you know, and he's like I, I said to you uh, a few weeks ago, he's yeah. going to end up in charge at the end. I know you did, yeah. At the start of the first season, he's a mascot in a in a in a in a theme park. Yeah. At the end of the third season, he's second in charge at the news network behind um, behind uh, what's his name uh, behind Tom. You behind know. Tom, because Tom's he's, in charge, yeah. And and obviously his 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 grandfather's there and the back I don't know I think it might be something to do with the grandfather which will end up meaning that he'll end up or or because basically by the end of I mean we're spoiler spoiler warning by the end of this season Logan's basically disowned all his children pretty much yep. almost that's yeah. the impression you're getting yeah. You know, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think we're seeing everything. Yeah. I don't want to get too, I got too much in the end. And we're going to save, let's save the ending for the, the yeah. end. Okay. But okay. yeah, uh, Greg is played by Nicholas Braun. And Nicholas mm. Braun is possibly one of the most awkward, uncomfortable performances. He gave sort of the, one of the most awkward, uncomfortable performances I've seen in so long. And he is so, so good at it because you cringe every time he tries to speak. See, when he tries to speak to the, the assist, Kendall's assistant and try to date her, he's like, well, well, hi there, fair, fair maiden. Oh, that's but that's he, awful nice of you. But then he moves on to the countess because <laughs> he, he thinks he can do better. But then he does. <laughs> that's the thing. He's like he lives in his, his own self doubt, and then manages to. And next thing you know, he's dating the bloody countess now. Oh, yeah, I love it. Amazing. The guy, the guy has gave just a phenomenal performance. Like Nicholas, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm I'm tagging literally every single person in this, and I hope to watch our daft little videos here, but. I hope, yeah. honest to God, Nicholas Braun. I swear to God, I'd love to see you in more. Like, you give God all this stuff coming up, obviously, but um, uh, amazing, absolutely, yeah, really, good. really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, who have we not talked about? We've not talked about Ryan Cox yet. Ryan Cox. Right, Ryan I, Cox I was performance as Logan Roy. Yeah. I was thinking about something. Um, just. 
uh, yesterday or the day before. Uh, it, it, it popped in my head again. I started thinking yeah. about it. Is I don't know if you noticed, right? This really interesting thing. The first sort of half of the season, he, he was trying to look like he was a bit worried and a little bit weak. Yeah. And then suddenly he, about episodes seven into eight and nine, he became like the old Logan Roy again. And I noticed this thing that he suddenly, his hair was done immaculately for the last three episodes. Yeah. Did you, did you notice it? He was very smart. Like he, suddenly, he suddenly looked like he knew exactly what was going to happen at that point. Mm. He knew exactly the, the play. And he was just he was just working it and working it and working it. At that point, he's like he had it, he had his problems, and that probably the bit that was it sort of came to head was when he was we had the thing when he couldn't pee, yeah. and then he had the thing when he had when he almost collapsed going for that walk with Adrian Brody's character. Yeah, and then after that, I don't know something seemed to click, and he just sort of figured it out. And then I think that the his new assistant, who everyone says he's he's having sex with, yeah, I think she's gonna in the next season is gonna turn into a really important character. Because he seems to listen to her about everything, so yeah. there must be something there. Uh, and there's, there's a suggestion that possibly his current wife, Marsha, was basically her before. Yes, yes, yes. Marsha well. still keeps popping up as well. You know what I mean? so yeah. She's still, every so often, she appeared in the, the last episode, and she appeared at the start of the season, obviously, when they were discussing separation and yeah. all that and everything being fin- finalised. But, yeah. holy crap, like... Brian mm. Cox is Brian Cox is is what we what I call platinum tier actor. He's a platinum yeah, yeah. tier actor. He's one of those I'm actors. Oh, he's one of those actors that can step into any role and he just becomes whatever it is that he's got. Yeah. And he's I mean, absolutely talk- incredible. When we were talking a little bit about him before, and I was talking about some of the because obviously I watch far too much TV and films. Um, but like some sites like Southern, like even go back to Mindhunter way back in the day, you know, when oh, yes, the yes, yeah. Hannibal Lecter. Uh, his Hannibal Lecter was much more like Mads Mickelson's in the TV show, I always thought. Yeah, well. well, that's what I, I, gen- I thought that Mags Mickelson had probably watched that and that's where he got that and, kind of performance. And, from. And, uh, Running with Scissors, a really good film, uh, when he plays a very different sort of character. And even down to like TV stuff, uh, he was in um, Torchwood for, for about a season and he played quite a camp theatre, uh, like a theatre vaudeville type character. Yeah. And a very different sort of character as well. And um, I don't think you bring that up. I don't think that was your kind of cup of tea. Torchwood was, no, no, not Torchwood, sorry. Deadwood, the one with. Deadwood um, was like, what? Right? I'm like, you. Lost not Torchwood, sorry. <laughs> Having on a dead, dead, you know the one with uh, Ian McShane, the dead, cowboy yes, one. Yes, I was like Deadwood. Torchwood. Deadwood. Dead, no, Deadwood. Deadwood. Yeah. Deadwood. He's in the second or third season of that. The second in the middle of the second season of that, he plays a very different sort of character. And yeah. then he's in my he's in my favorite film of all time, which is Twenty Fifth Hour, the Spike Lee film, and he he plays a sort of more vulnerable type character as well, which is really good. Um, but he's just a phenomenal actor. You know, he he's good in everything he's in. Even there's some. He went through a bit of a spell where he started doing a few sort of like lower budget films, a lot of British. Uh, there was one I watched called The Escapist, yeah. which was a prison thing when he's trying to escape prison, and that was really good. But a much lower budget and stuff like that. And he seems to have this seems to have re- reignited his career again. Yeah, uh, the show, which is you know, I'm I'm all for that because he's he's phenomenal. Yeah, well, see, there was, there's certain people in my life, Nathan, that I think that it would be a welcome on this show, like to do a discussion with, to chat with, and he's one of the first people that I'll be going after. I think that's definitely one of the first people we'll be targeting. That's uh, yeah, yeah man, I've got a list. Going I've got a list for it, Brian. We're coming for you, Brian. We are coming for you. I've You're gonna. I want you on questions. this show. I've got, a list of questions. I've got a list of questions for him already. Don't oh, we've just got, me and him. I've got a list <laughs> of like so many people that I want to see, but Brian Cox is easily one of the highest people that we we want in our first interviews. We've got a lot of interviews that we're planning on trying and getting people on, but he's high up there, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see. But yeah, um, you might tell us to fuck off. <laughs> See, honestly, that's all I want is him at the end just to go, uh, fuck off. <laughs> That'd be so good. Yeah. Another character we've not discussed, I think we definitely should discuss a little bit closer to home, is Matthew McFadden. Yeah. Uh, Matthew McFadden plays Tom, married to uh, Shiv in the film. And, oh, my God, he's literally one of the most cringeworthy characters I've ever met in my life, but I love him. <laughs> I think yep. everything he does in the film is just perfect, and the show is perfect. Like he's so creepy and so weird and so awkward. But I the love way he plays off of Greg. 
I love the way that he sort of gets shit on by the, the family a bit because he's an outsider and he's a bit more of a a pleb, as it were, you know. But then he then, like, he's like, it's like when you're at, you know, when I've, I've got an older brother, right? Yeah. And when we were like, you know, early teenagers, especially, he used to, he used to abuse me. And then I would then abuse my younger sister even worse because, you know, and it's like that with him and Greg, isn't it? Yeah. You know? He's just passing it down, he's just filtering down to Greg, but he's so good at it. And is it, is it me? Because, right, I've seen uh, Matthew McFadden in TV and film. Is he putting on a voice? Because a very weird nasal kind of thing that he's got. Well, he's, he's, oh, he's putting a, that we. Um, I don't know if he's putting on that um, American accent, isn't he? So I yeah, don't know if it's... Have you noticed that there's a, sli- it's a slight back to it the might nose be, uh, kind of... Hi, I'm something. Tom. Maybe it's like, uh, you know, people from Bears Den in Glasgow put that voice on. Don't isolate the viewers, maybe, Nathan. Don't isolate the maybe, viewers. Maybe he's, uh, you know, pretending, maybe that's a Connecticut accent or something, you know, you know what I mean? But maybe it, that's it, what it's it definitely, for me, it's this, this mm-hmm. almost awkward thing, like, uh, mm-hmm. it's just, you know, you know when it kind of goes back a little bit in the nose and he, he speaks, hi, yeah, when he speaks to Greg, it's, a, it's like it goes back there all the time. And I think it, mm-hmm. it's almost unsettling the way he does it. It makes you feel kind of creepy around him. And I've not yeah. heard him. His voice isn't like that in normal TV shows and everything else. No, because I mean, the first thing I remember him in was Spooks back in the day. Oh, yeah, when he's a suave... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then I watched a really good film that he was in called Incendiary with Hugh McGregor and uh, Michelle uh, Williams. Is it not Williams? What's her um, name? I know the name of the one film. Was in, the one that was in Blue Valentine and she was in Dawson's Creek. Michelle something. Williams. You know what I mean. So I that's what I said. So I yeah, as it's Williams. I, I, I suddenly thought that was the one in Destiny's Child, but maybe she's got the same name. Um, <laughs> but anyway, a really good film. It's like a it's a terrorist like spy type film as well. He's in that, and he's very good in that. Um, but yeah, I think he's just really good in it. I mean, he just um, he, he's he seems to have lost a bit of weight for this as well because he, yeah, he's he a little bit bigger. Yeah, he used to be. Um, a, I think he was a little bit heavier. Um, but he's I think definitely slimmed down. It works really well for this. I love that scene. Where obviously in this he he in the first couple of seasons he was very much just whatever Shiv whatever best for Shiv and he realizes quite early on in this season that Shiv doesn't really give a shit about him mm-hmm. you know and he's just out for what's best for himself and there's a scene when uh, Kendall's in one office Logan's in one office and he's standing outside and he's sort of looking around and you can see and I think it would be quite easy to think that he was sort of going oh shit where do I go but he's actually probably for me, he was sat there thinking, "What? Where's, where's the best place for me to go?" Yeah, you know, oh, that, to get that, the best out of the situation. That was just that was just in the season, wasn't it? That episode. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, and it was. It was out the camera behind his his head, and he was looking and about. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. He's a power player. He, he all he wants is to know what's what's the most powerful position that he can be. And in. the bit, and the bit when he offers to go to prison for the. the oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, the cruise rape thing, he at that point, I mean, he's in uh, Logan's good books at that point. Oh, definitely. And, that, and that's what that sort of sets up what happens at the end. Yeah, I think. I think, like, see, I think, see, the end, like, uh, like we're going to go into scenes now because obviously it's not yeah. that I'm going to skip any of the other actors because the actors are absolutely fantastic. If I've missed Alan Ruck, super amazing, they've got. Yeah, uh, yeah. Haima Bass, Alexander Skarsgård, Peter Friedman, everybody in this has been absolutely amazing. There's not Quite a me. single bad actor. You, uh, honest to God, was, everybody's amazing. How good, how good was Alexander Skarsgård in those two two episodes he was in? Yeah, like, just a weirdo. <laughs> He's a super geek, isn't he? a super geek, you know. Uh, oh yeah, like super weirdo. I mean, like every single person. Mm-hmm. If I've not mentioned your name and you do happen to watch this, I apologize. Yeah, I know, not that you watch yeah. it, but um. It's it, every single it's one of the best cast TV shows I've ever seen in my life. But we're going to move into scenes now. Um, okay. Some of the scenes, and like I said at the start, I want to talk about possibly one of the most tense, amazing scenes I have ever watched. And it's not even super long. It's probably ten mm-hmm. minutes at the very, very most. It's when Kendall mm-hmm. sits. And it's, it's like two episodes before the finale. Kendall sits opposite Logan. Just for a, no second a, last episode. It's second episode last seven. episode. Eight, sorry, yeah, yeah. Basically, sits in front of him. It was the two of them have just decided to meet, and there's this. 
Oh, and well, we're going to get into this as well, and I'll bring it up now before we move into it, is Shakespeare. This is possibly one of the most Shakespearean scenes of, of everything that I've seen to, to a point. The whole, the whole way through this, because of what how the season two ended, right? And I went yeah. into this season. Um, and because of what uh, Kendall did at the end of season two to create this rift and you know, try and take control of the company and stuff like that, the whole way through, I was waiting for, when's you going to bring up the dead kid? Yeah. yeah. When's he going to bring it up? When's he going to bring it up? And he did it so well. He, he, he was like, he just sort of said, all I've ever done is tried to help you. And then talked about the kid. And I thought, that is the best threat I've ever seen on television. Because yeah. it wasn't like a proper threat. He's just basically saying, and he was just so calm. Yeah. No anger or anything like that. He's just like, he's just basically said to this guy, whenever I want, I've got you. Yeah. But, you know, and even not, 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 even, not even like a police thing or anything like that. Just that. Yeah. You know, I can bring this up and make you feel like shit at any time yeah. I want. You know, and that that is the power play. But at the end of the day, what uh, Roman said as well is almost true. Because I mean, like he did, he did try and help him. He did try and do all the right things. And unfortunately, it was everything that happened was beyond his control. But it's the fact that he's letting that take over him. I swear to God, if a psychologist catches this in the next season, Kendall is going to be an absolute powerhouse. I think in the next season, if he manages to shut this out. No, I think I think Kendall I think Kendall will go I think he's gonna go way off the rails. Ah, oh right, right, predictions, hold on, hold on. We'll go back to the scene. Let's go back to the scene. Predictions. Yeah, but no, come. I just, I, it, was, it was like you said, it's very sort of Shakespearean in nature. Yeah. It also reminded me of I don't know, I can imagine it being a scene out of like the Godfather or something. Yeah. You know, that sort of because it's obviously it's, it's that Italian sort of setting. Yeah. At the table and everything and just the way So what was that kind of like the whole way through, I, I was. Uh, my mum loved the first two seasons of this, and she tried yeah. to watch the third. And she didn't. She didn't like it. Yeah. And I said to her, I said to her, but do you not see what it is? It's like you think up to that point in that in that episode, you think. Well, I thought Kendall and Logan are the same person. They're yeah. exactly the same person. They're just trying to do the same thing. And at that point, you you suddenly realise Kendall's nothing like Logan. Yeah. Because Logan can just turn it off and turn it back on again whenever he wants. Whereas Kendall, because he gradually unravels in this, doesn't he? Through the last couple of episodes of the season, yeah, he can't. You know? He can't take anymore. He actually, he doesn't. He realizes he cannot be this person that Logan has been born. He has built the company. He has made and shot, stabbed, murdered, killed, and just done everything to get to the where he is just now. Kendall's had it all. He's went through the situations and he's watched from afar, but he thinks he is elitist. And I, mm -hmm. he, he's not. He's like the, the only person that's ever going to be like that is these guys who run these companies, who have mm -hmm. built themselves up to where they are. He has done it. Mm -hmm. He has deflected everything. Kendall's just been in the situation and thinks he can do it because he's watched his dad do it. And yep. we've literally witnessed him just collapse by the time it gets to the last episode. episode. I think you see. I think you, towards the end of it, I was starting to realise as well that the all the children. There's parts of each. There's parts of Logan's personality in each of them. Yeah. But if you take all those personalities together, it becomes Logan. You know, and that's why he. That's why he defeats them so easily in the end. Yeah. Because he knows exactly what they're going to do, and he knows exactly what sort of people they are. Because part of them, because all of them are all of them are trying to be like him, but they're not quite there because they don't have all of the traits that he's got. Especially when that when the. Like I said, the bit at the end with, uh, I mean, you're talking about scenes again. I think the last, the last scene in mm -hmm. that room when the, the kids are in there, yeah, um, with Logan, and he just fucking just, pardon my French, he just destroys them, yeah, you know. And that's, this is this is when I, was, I I said to you that you know it's very Shakespearean, and I you said that and it's like it's King Lear basically, and that scene it was like yeah. a this um, King Lear is lots of it sort of like um, a lot of it is just uh, King Lear talking. Yeah. And talking and, and explaining stuff and doing that and that scene it's like because he was because he sort of sort of stood up and they were sort of sitting down and he was sort of talking down to him it was just it was so Shakespearean yeah. the way that happened the whole the whole season has been but this that uh, scene especially and the way he just sort of dismisses him and walks out oh. it's just like you know we're done I mean, like, you've literally got Roman collapsing you've got Shiv is just have about to have an absolute breakdown and she's just uh, ev you can. Roman's gone already. He became the baby. He just literally became the kid. Shiv is still taking everything in. Kendall's already mush. Kendall's gone. Kendall knows yeah. he's been defeated. He knows he's out. Yeah. And then it was Shiv was still desperately clinging on to hope, thinking, like, I can do this. I'm still going to find a plan. I'm still going to work this out. And then she says, 
how did how, wait, how did he know? And then Tom comes out and walks. And I oh, swear to God, see that minute, the minute when he just Logan turns around and pats him on the shoulder, and I was like, <gasps> I thought oh my god, it was Tom. Luckily, I saw it the day after I watched it, but the I saw a thing on Twitter the next day, and it was a made-up uh, picture of the in front of Time magazine, yeah. and it said "Man of the Year" of Tom Wamsgang. I thought <laughs> I thought that was quite cool. If I could, if oh, I could find that, I'll, I'll put that up. But, yeah, um, I find it was quite cool. Yeah, I think like that. Like I said that that scene at the end just is. I mean, like you like you were saying, like every single kid has got their own kind of weakness because they're only part of Logan. And it was mm. to watch each of them walk in that room so callous and just full mm. of venom, ready to destroy their dad. And he barely had to say anything. And each one of them collapsed bit by bit and just washed them. And then he's like, "I'm done with you." Um, and I think, and at the end of the, the end of it, the only one of the. Um sons that one of one of the children that's still standing almost is uh, what's his name he wants to be president corner yeah because he's you know because the whole way through he's always been about i don't want to hurt dad i don't want to hurt dad the whole way through he says that you know yeah. he says i want i want to be more involved i want this i want that but i don't want to hurt dad and that's every decision he makes is based on that yeah. so he's probably the only one that's got like a heart out of them almost yeah, he's, he's deemed and, as well, a think, stupid one yeah. He's, 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 portray- he's portrayed as being a stupid one, but I don't think he's as stupid as he's made out to be. Yeah. I, 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 he sort of almost feels like a, a George W. Bush sort of thing. You know, seen as being the, the, the stupid one, seen as being a bit of a bumbling idiot, yeah. but actually is quite astute and quite clever underneath. Oh, definitely, because like he's... Mm. I think like everything that he says, everything he did is just it's just he he just wants to be make his dad happy. You know what I mean? It's it, and he's obviously the, the different sibling because he's got a different mum in the show. So it's only yeah, yeah. it's only Logan is 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 his true father. But yeah, I, didn't, I didn't I didn't realize that until towards the end of the that there's a different mother. Oh yeah, I think I they missed, highlighted. I must it. have missed it earlier on. I must have missed it, it earlier on. It wasn't talked about a lot, and it, it was only I think I was paying like gave it my full attention at one point. Like I was, you know, watched a couple of episodes again of season two because I'd watched yeah. it, went back and went, I can't, I forgot what's happening, and then I went back in and watched the first two again. And I was like, all right, I got it. Another scene I want to talk about is the yeah. the, the birthday party. Yeah. The like Kendall's birthday. Kendall's birthday party, the bit sort of where they're sort of stood about and they're talking because obviously they're going. To, he's uh, Roman and and, uh, and Shiv are trying to go and talk to Scarsgar's character, yeah. um, and uh, Kendall's there, and it's just suddenly they all become little children again. You, know, you talk about how 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 you like brothers and sisters talk to each other, but suddenly uh, Kendall's like, "Oh, you know, you can't go, you can't do that because you've been not been very nice to me and all that." Stuff. And I'm sorry, like, suddenly they're like twelve year olds again. Yeah, and they give them the same. The setting yeah. of like the treehouse, everything was different parts of that of Kendall's life, and they all just became yeah. kids. That's so true. Yeah, 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 and then even the you know they have this sort of almost like a like a, like a fight, and Kendall falls over, and he he gets up and he looks like he's going to cry and stuff like that. It's just like it's just it's a perfect. It's like a playground. Yeah. Again, and you know, and the Romans, the sort of slightly insecure kid who's the bully, you know, yeah. and and you can yeah. imagine when they were kids, that's probably exactly what it was like. You know what I mean? Yeah, these these kids just haven't grown up at all into this life. Just stupendous writing, though. It's just it's just <sighs> phenomenal writing, you know. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and it honestly can. I think one of the biggest shows I talked about uh, the last year was uh, Made of East Town. That was an absolutely tremendous show, and the, the show that I'm talking about now is this. I'm going to be talking about this for so long. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for mm-hmm. season four. I honestly can't wait for more of this. It's absolutely brilliant. I am going to tag mm-hmm. every single person that is involved in this, all the actors, I'm, everyone, just to, if you want to watch this. I'm interested. I hope they don't try and drag it on for too long. I don't. I, I think I, it's. Got, I think it's got one, maybe two more seasons in it. I think it's probably got more than one because I think that mm-hmm. I think I've got an idea. Like let's, this is. We'll probably close on this. Let's close on this. Let's close mm-hmm. on our thoughts for what's going to happen in the next few seasons. I know what yours is. I know exactly. You've kind of hinted at it, and you've told me before. Mm-hmm. But what do you what do you think? Where are we going to end up at the end run, and how long do you think they can do it for? And is there, any, is there anything that you think is going to happen over the next couple of seasons? 
like I said to you already, I think that Greg will eventually be in charge. Mm. Maybe even if he's just a figurehead, because he's sort of gradually been ingratiating himself into the family. He's gradually accidentally going up and up and up and up in the in the organization. Um I think that at least one of the children will end up in jail. I don't know what for, I don't know which one. Um <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Connor actually does something in the political sphere, gets mm. somewhere mm. or something. Maybe he'll take, like, you know, maybe he'll, rather than running as an independent, maybe he'll get, he'll, like, a vice president or something. I don't know. I've got a feeling some of that's going to happen. I think what I can see, because it's happened in this season, in the first season, where Logan has a bit of time and his, his brain almost goes. And it reminded me a little bit of... Um, what was that called? That, that TV show a couple of years ago with Peter Mullen, who was set in Brighton when he was a gangster, but he kept losing his memory. Uh, something Fear. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Something Fear. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean, anyway. I know what you're um, talking about, yeah. I'll sing a name up. It reminded me a bit of that, and I thought, maybe he'll, you know, I think Logan is going to, I think you're going to see more, as the next couple of seasons go on, I think you're going to see more and more of him not being with it, and him being them thinking they can, you know, get round them somehow. But I don't think the kids will come out on top. Mm. Yeah. None of them. Yeah. That's kind of, almost the same, almost the same as mine. Yeah. Mm. I've got I, I do believe that Connor is probably going to have a run for presidency. Mm. I believe that's going to happen. I think it's just going to be like no fault of his own and no fault of trying. I think he's suddenly going to be liked and loved. That could be a whole season. That, that could be like the the arc of a season, couldn't it? Yeah, I Quite think easily. that's going to be a massive, massive part of what's going to happen. I think he's definitely it, he was definitely in this season much more than the first two. Yeah, Connor. I, I think that what's going to happen is obviously they will sell the company. The company will bite out. Something will happen. I think the presidency thing will happen, and that will secure Roy Star. I think Roy Star will end up still being such a big part mm. because obviously it's a presidential candidate that's still running mm. part of the family. I think that's going to succeed it. I think. Skarsgård's still going to be in it and I think something's going to happen it's going to ruin that side and I think Roy Star will still come out on top but yeah. I think the true successor I think is going to be Shiv I've got a funny feeling that Shiv's going to end up with everything I think that Sh- uh, Shiv and Tom think, to be honest I could see something happening like um, Logan puts her in charge to, so that it fails and he buys the company back at a lower price or something that's a good one that's a really good one actually Loses you know, billions, think, but still owns. I think he knows that she's not... I think Logan knows that Kendall is the most able of all the guys, but he doesn't have that, that, that you know, that the, the stability of mind and the being able to, you know, think about, think above everything else and not put his, he puts his feelings into it all, and he can't take that out. And Logan talks about that a little bit during it, that mm. he needs to, you know... Detach himself from these decisions. He talks about it to Shiv a little bit as well. Yeah. Um. I think that. I think Shiv is like. I think it's a like I said. It goes back to this sort of uh, sort of childhood thing as well, where you know she's the only girl and she wants to play with her brother's toys, and that's sort of what it is as well with the with the company thing of as yeah. well. I think. But no, I think uh, I can see. I think. Um, yeah, I don't think any of the kids are going to end up. I think they'll end up being the successor. I think they'll always be a puppet until he's maybe one of them will kill him or something. I don't know. No, I, de- I definitely, I've got a funny feeling Shiv's going to be involved. I think, but mm. I think, I think Shiv is going to use Tom to get there. Well, could could the next season? Because obviously, the first three seasons have all been sort of around um, the Logan Kendall sort of fight, and obviously by the end of this, Kendall's been beaten to submission. So maybe oh, it's going. Gone. To, Kendall's done. Maybe it's going to transfer into a Logan Shiv. Yeah. Sort of rivalry. Yeah. She's the one that's got the most bite out of everybody. Romulus doesn't. You know what I mean? Rom- Roman does not. He's just kind of there. He just gets guided. He's just this wee kind of little snappy thing. But Shiv's got the brain. Shiv's got everything. And I think she's got the idea. She's the ideas woman. I think she's going to use Tom. And I think she'll realise that Tom has now has the power and, the, and he's clear. Oh, you know what? Just suddenly, because remember there was, a, there was that bit about, I think it was in episode six or seven where he talks about kids. I haven't talked about kids before. Maybe she'll say, "If you do this for me, I'll I'll give you a give kid." You a kid. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah, no, I mean, 
I mean, realistically, it's probably what it's been about eighteen months between season two and season. Two. I know it was delayed because of uh, yeah, it was a massive, COVID. massive delay. I think I think they'll be on it. I think they'll be filming relatively quickly on this one. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's it's turned into. I mean, the first season was a bit of a sleeper hit. The second season grew, and now it's probably the biggest TV show in the world. Oh, easy! It's it's right huge. It's massive just now. So Absolutely they'll want massive. to get it out probably next year at the same sort of time next year. You'd imagine. Yeah, but honestly, if you've not watched it, you shouldn't have watched what we were saying because that spoiled quite a lot of the show. But if you've enjoyed. <laughs> If you enjoyed listening to us ramble or watching us ramble, then please hit like, subscribe, anything. But um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, Succession Season 3. We are here in the comments. I'm always here. Nathan will be there. Tony, everyone else that's involved is going to be in the comments. Just hit a comment down. We'll chat with you. We'll talk to you. We'll do whatever you want. We'll chat. Please, we want to know your ideas. We want to know what's going to happen the next season. This has been a good, good breakdown of this show. I think you've got two of his biggest fans on planet Earth here. have <laughs> <laughs> just spent an hour chatting about it. But um, yeah, and Brian Cox, we're coming for you. We are coming yep. for you. If we don't get, I'm, I, I swear to God, I live in Glasgow, Brian. Um, I'll come all the way to Dundee, I'll hunt you down, and I will get an interview from you, and I'll get you on this show. <laughs> He's an, he's an actor in the UK. If I was in London, I'll go, I'll go around Primrose Hill. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are, Brian. We're, we're coming for you. Either I'm going to get you in Dundee or Nathan's going to get you in London. <laughs> and all we want to hear is you telling us to fuck off. <laughs> but yeah. In the meantime, thank you very much for joining us, Nathan. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our chat about uh, Succession Season 3. And now, if you want to, you can fuck off. We can do this all day.